Morning folks, hope you're doing well. Matt Carvel here. Thanks for joining us as we continue our journey through the New Testament with these daily devotion videos. Where we are this morning is chapter 24. We're approaching the end of Jesus's life and the events and what is described is taking place in and around uh, Jerusalem, and that's mentioned uh, right at the beginning of the chapter that we're looking at today, 24, uh, and the temple that was in Jerusalem. And as it's been referred to, Jesus knows that his time is coming to an end on earth. He, he's pointing towards his death in, in some of the things that he's been saying. But in this passage that we're looking at this morning, He's actually pointing beyond that to events that are going to happen after his death and resurrection. Specifically, there's two things that Jesus is obviously referring to. But the passage, to be honest, is a bit confusing because those two things are kind of mixed together. And it's not quite clear uh, which one he's referring to when. But there's two things that stand out. Firstly, the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus is saying this is going to happen. That's a very clear thing that he's saying. And in fact, history tells us that this happened uh, about 40 years after uh, Jesus said this. In about AD 70, Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple uh, with it. So that's a very specific thing. The second thing that Jesus is clearly referring to here is something that's a bit more vague in terms of detail, but also time scale, is the second coming of Jesus, when the, the age is going to come to an end, when Jesus is going to return. And that's kind of mixed in here as well. And, and the references to that are, are a bit confusing, perhaps, and we're not quite uh, sure about what it's really saying to us. Despite that, there's certainly, we detect in this passage, an appetite from the disciples to know. They're asking Jesus, what are the signs? What it's gonna, what's it going to be like? We certainly have uh, that kind of question uh, in our house at the minute. Our son Reuben, who uh, turned, he turns five next week. And so he's asking every day, how many days is it to go now? And when he's not asking how many days is it, he's wondering what we're going to be having for tea, what's going to be like, what we're going to do, and most importantly of all, what his presents are going to be. It's important when we read the New Testament, we remember that the Jewish people who feature most prominently in the narrative are a people that live with an expectation, a messianic hope. It was part of their story. They knew that a savior, a messiah, a great hero, someone who's going to rescue them is going to come. And so the questions that they asked Jesus come with this with this background in mind. What is it going to be like? And so when they get to know Jesus and realize that he starts to, it dawns on them that he's the messiah and he's pointing to future events, they're very keen to know what it's going to be all about. There are a few things that we can take from this that are helpful for us. How does Jesus respond as he points to the future? What are the promises that he gives to his disciples, but also he gives to us? There's some words of warning, but there's also words of encouragement in there as well. Three things that we can pull out from this passage that Jesus is saying about what's going to happen in the future before Jesus returns. Not all of it, to be honest, is good news. There's some warnings in here as well. And that's the first thing I want to say. One of the things that Jesus said is going to be tribulation. Jesus is saying in the future and in a broad sense, he's referring to us as followers of Jesus now. He's saying it's going to, not going to be easy to be a Christian. There's going to be challenge, there's going to be opposition. And Jesus refers to this idea many times in his ministry, that if people hated Jesus, they're going to hate Jesus' followers as well. And we should not be surprised by that, and we should expect that. The second thing that Jesus is warning uh, his disciples, I suppose, and by extension us, is also temptation. There's tribulation, things will be difficult for Jesus' followers, but there's also temptation. He warns people and says, actually, don't, don't fall away. He's even presenting the fact that when things do get difficult, it's easy. It's easy to fall away from Jesus. 
It's easy to get distracted, to be deceived, to uh, have other priorities come to us, even to the point of walking away from Jesus. And Jesus is, is clear uh, in, in warning people against that. Perhaps that's a reflection for each one of our hearts. Where, where are we following the world's way? What is distracting us away from Jesus? We can fall away in, in a small sense uh, on a day-to-day uh, level as well. And we should take that as a reminder from Jesus to be alert by that. Where are our hearts starting to go astray uh, from Jesus in our lives? Those are two warnings. But the third thing is of great encouragement to us. Despite the uncertainty of the future in the lead up to Jesus's return, despite the tribulation, despite the temptation, verse 14 stands out for me. It says, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. There's great certainty in this verse. Jesus is saying that the future of the church is not up for debate, it's certain. Jesus is saying the success of the gospel is not in question, it's certain. That the gospel is going to bear fruit right around the world into different cultures, people groups, backgrounds. People are going to find Jesus and that's the work of the Holy Spirit through the church in the world today. And when that has happened sufficiently, according to Jesus, that is the time that he will return. We don't know when that will be, but we know it's preceded by the success of the gospel. And we can take great encouragement from that. And I want you to take that today. Whether there are people that you're praying for, people that you're witnessing to, people that you're reaching out to and you would like to tell them more about Jesus, we can take great encouragement from the fact that the gospel will and does bear fruit. It's not up for grabs. God is doing it in the world and maybe he's even doing it through you right now. So that let that encourage us in our praying this week, in our witnessing this week, in even just sharing the link out to uh, our Sunday services and things like that. God is at work in the world, bringing people to himself. This gospel of the kingdom is bearing fruit. That is a promise of Jesus to us today.